I'm not the most traditional of storytellers, but I do have this to say. To thine own self be true. Less poetically put, live free or die. You know, it really is my motto. I know, I know it happens. It happens to be the motto on the license plate, right? For the state of New Hampshire, the state I now call home. The economy took me there. You see, my husband got a job. But now, guys, now that I've been there for a year, you know, I can honestly say it, it, it is as much a mental state <laughs> as it is a physical <laughs> You see, when we first got there, we had just sold our con condo in Cambridgeport. We loved the city, but we had to get free of debt. So, get ready, we bought a, a little cabin in the woods, very pretty. Very pretty, surrounded by mountains and lakes, and a dead deer hanging just beyond my window. <laughs> but see, in my zeal to economize, I'd ignored some signs. <laughs> you know, like the realtor mentioning um, that I should wear orange. <laughs> just, just, just from November to, to March. <laughs> season. And I was like, wait, you mean people who get shot? Not many. <laughs> There's a really good hospital nearby. <laughs> I, I also, guys, I noticed that there was no bathtub. But you know what? I rarely use a tub. I mean, a, a shower it was fine, except it wasn't. <laughs> the radon, too high. And besides, my husband said he would get me something. He did. He went to Home Depot and he bought me a large oval feed trough to sit in. <laughs> it's what cows and pigs use. <laughs> it was like, Breakers is the place for me, Bar. I never understood that show as a kid. And now, it was like I had my SAG card, Screen Actors Guild. I never auditioned, I was starring in them thing. <laughs> but you know, for me, the turning point, the bird feeders. See, he put them, my husband, ha ha, I know you have one too. Eight years for you, a hundred yeah. for me. He put them all around the cabin, okay, just outside the windows, and beautiful, beautiful birds would come. And one day I noticed, you know, uh, and come to use them, and one day I noticed that they had really been used, you know, as in shattered, a <laughs> mauled, a uh, bear had visited. You're in the country, you, you're going to have wild animals. I, I just hadn't anticipated my husband becoming one. <laughs> you see, when I told him uh, about the bear, he got so excited. He said, Lizzie, when a bear breaks in, this is how you defend yourself. <laughs> and I flat this is when speaking of home, I flash back to my family of origin. My father, a Jewish doctor, and his warning. He said, Liz, Liz, you don't cook. What are you gonna do when he wants his cornbread? I'm like, yeah, Dad, right. I mean he he works in a lab, he has a PhD, he's right. The cabin is the cornbread. <laughs> and my husband was becoming Davy Crockett. <laughs> So he's holding the rifle stuff. He's still, oh, I forgot to mention, the rifle, whoops. You see, he was a Midwesterner, and his father had given him an old rifle. And he's holding it, and he goes, okay, Lizzie. So the bear's in, you aim. You aim, you know what, you aim, you leave your marriage. No, I wasn't even in the room anymore. No, I was in a dissociative state. It was like, live free or die. I, I want to die. I mean, let the bear break in. Get me out of here. <laughs> Never came back. The bear. I'm too busy. No. I, I would have to get myself out. And I hated, I really did hate, I hated to break my husband's spirit. But you know, this was not my home. I mean, it was me or the bear. <laughs> well, we now live in a small room. 
in a large Victorian in town. The bird feeders, though, they're back. And the other day, I noticed a large deer. He was nuzzling. And I heard myself muttering, you're alone, I hope. I mean, I had always loved deer. I'd never been hostile, but you know what, guys? Now I was in New Hampshire, which for me really is a mental state. <laughs> Thank you.